Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Today we're going to try to detect Starlink satellites using this handheld device. Now we're not actually going to get satellite internet this way. We're just going to see if we can pick up Starlink's beacon signal on the KU satellite band. So, what we have here is my little Raspberry Pi powered tricorder, or Pi quarter. I've got a Raspberry Pi mini computer, a little screen, a software defined radio, some other stuff, and then a battery pack to run the thing. We're also going to be using the LNB from a satellite dish. We don't actually need the entire dish for this process. We just need the little receiver that sits at the focal point of the satellite dish and actually converts the signals into something we can read with our uh, computer system here. We're going to need some wires and adapters to connect these things together. And then we're going to need this little power injector to actually power this guy because it takes 12 volts through the coax cable here. So if you've ever looked closely at a satellite dish, you might notice this LNB looks a little different from what you typically find. This is more like the typical one. This is a commercial model that I picked up at Axeman Surplus, my favorite local store. And um, this guy here is a universal LNB. So the commercial one has a circular polarization, meaning it's expecting the signals to come in kind of a spiral. This guy has a linear polarization, meaning the signals are coming in either horizontally or vertically. They have a few other differences. This has two inputs, so you can connect it to two different receivers, or you could have one of these as the power supply and one as the video out. Um, this one is more suited for Europe and parts of the world where there are a lot more free satellite TV signals, and this is more what you'd find in North America with your pay-per-view channels, uh, your Dish Network, uh, Direct TV, and whatnot. So let's get this all assembled and see what we can find. All right, there are some Starlink signals right there. So each one of these little streaks we're getting on the screen is the beacon signal from a different Starlink satellite. So we're picking up multiple satellites going across here. And the reason that the trace is angled like this is because the satellites are moving. They're in low Earth orbit. They're going over pretty quickly compared to our stationary ground station location here. And so as they pass overhead, the Doppler shift from their motion causes the frequency to increase or decrease depending on which direction they're going. All right, so our universal LNB works great, but what about a commercial one? Let's swap this out and we'll try the uh, generic one that you find on any roof in the U.S. and often in piles of trash by the side of the road. Now this particular LNB is not working. Some of the commercial ones output in different frequency ranges than the universal LNBs, so not all of them will work for this purpose. They're really designed for a very narrow range of frequencies for very specific TV satellites, and they're just not as flexible as some of these universal or free-to-air LNBs that you can find online. I know the tiny little screen here on the Pi Quarter isn't the easiest to see in the video, so I'll throw up a demonstration using a laptop screen as well. I wanted to show you what this looks like on a larger computer screen, but my laptop isn't picking up Starlink at all. I'm using all the same hardware except for the SDR. Usually that guy works a little better. It's a nicer and more expensive unit, but it's not picking up anything with the same LNB, the same power injector, and all the same cables. I'm not sure what's going on with that, but it seems like my little handheld unit is actually way better at picking up Starlink signals. Okay, so as cool as this rig is, we still need to trail around a tether to our power supply. Or do we? I'm going to take another one of these power injectors. I'm going to take a couple 9 volt batteries that I've been powering some of my satellite LNBs with the little coax connector here. We'll hook up the 9 volts to our power injector. Yes, this is designed for 12 volts. I'm putting out 18 volts, but most of these LNBs can actually handle between 13 and 18 volts. And they use the different voltages to um, do some different things in the unit, like change vertical and horizontal polarity. So I'm thinking this will be just fine. And we've got ourselves a fully self-contained handheld Starlink detector. Sure, it's a little messy on the back side, but just ignore all that. Handheld Starlink detector. Pretty cool. And it's working great. It's a little hard to see again on the screen, but I'm picking up multiple satellite traces right now. So that probably is a whole train of recently launched satellites going overhead. That you can see they're spaced very close together, they're all moving at the same speed in the same direction, 
and we're getting some pretty strong signals, so this particular Starlink train must be fairly close to us. So again, what we're seeing here are just the locator beacons from each of the Starlink satellites. All of the internet traffic is on a completely different frequency range. These beacon signals just help pinpoint where each satellite is, and helps the ground station or receiver tune in as different satellites pass overhead. The beacons just happen to be in that KU band range, which is why we can pick them up with a satellite TV receiver. Since the satellites are in a low Earth orbit, they're much closer than an actual TV satellite, which would be in geostationary orbit. That's why we can pick up these KU beacons with just the raw LNB, no dish required. So I'm really happy with how well this turned out. My little Raspberry Pi tricorder keeps on showing off its flexibility, does just about every ridiculous project I throw at it so far, and uh, continues to prove that it's not just a gimmicky little toy I built. I can actually do some interesting ham radio, astronomy, amateur satellite enthusiast experiments with it. They don't really have a lot of practical purpose, kind of like a lot of my projects, but they're still fun. I'm learning a lot about radios, about satellite communication, about electronics, about all kinds of different stuff. So I'm going to have to come up with some more silly projects for it in the future. That's all we've got for this one. Thanks for watching. Check out some of my other videos. I've got other satellite dish projects that I work on. I've got other radio experimentation. I've got other Raspberry Pi stuff. I've got other tricorder projects like my little thermal camera here. And then I've got this whole garage full of junk, duct taped to other junk that sometimes does cool things, sometimes starts on fire. You'll have to watch my other videos to find out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.